this is setting a really high expectation of what I'm about to make you for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> exactly how I wanted them to look. They look great. Like I wanted to be able to walk up and cut them off. Just like that. Nice and straight. <laughs> so like this one's ready. They're so cool looking when they get that straight. That's huge. This one wanted to be a trumpet. <laughs> 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 well, we stick them in here and I'll feed it to them in the morning. Some of these are heavy. Like that one? That one's that's like a, a fat one. That's a Louisville slugger. Like <laughs> you can knock someone out with one of those. <laughs> It'll break. It would break, but you get one good hit. Wow, look at her carry that big old thing. That thing's bigger than you. <laughs> I said, you got it, baby? She goes, uh-huh. Yeah, that's taller than you. Good job, that's a sister. Big squash. That's a big squash. I'm gonna feed this to the pigs. Tomorrow for Tomorrow. breakfast. A bigger basket. Uh, there's, there's one right here. Okay. I grossly underestimated <laughs> the amount of tomatoes. This is what happens when you let your tomatoes live too close to your scorpion chilies. <laughs> Either that or this tomato has a nose. Yeah. It actually looks like Gru from Despicable Me. <laughs> Normal people play baseball. We play Kakuzi. Kakuzi chop. Chops them like nothing. That was kind of satisfying. It, it just keeps coming at you. You slice and it just keeps going through. Let me try one. <laughs> you almost don't bleeps. feel them. It goes straight through. It's almost good. Wow. Like you can do what Kyle Royer does. Crazy. You clamp it in a knot, nah. in a vise, and then just drop something on it. See, the pigs know we're wasting food. Uh -huh. yeah. So, these are beautiful. They are. All right. All right. So, this is just tonight. Yep. Got some brandy wines. Hey, where's the rest of our brandy wines? They're all out there. Okay, so we have more. This isn't it. Yeah. All right. All right. I guess we'll grab everything. No, this. Oh, you mean like what did we pick? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, That's they're it. they're buried in there. Oh, here. they're buried in there. Okay. Yeah. Ah, there they are. <laughs> Hiding under That's them. right. Mm -hmm. okay. I'd say that's a pretty good haul for tonight. Yeah, that is. That is.
So the feeder pigs, their uh, their feeder is empty. So today, they get nothing but food scraps and veggies from the garden. Check this feeder. There's a tiny bit of feed. Yeah, the camera doesn't want to focus. There's a tiny bit down there in the bottom. But I've found out with this feeder, if I give them 100 pounds, they'll burn through it in a day. And they just pull it out on the ground. They do eat it, you know, if it spills on the ground. But you can see, like, there is some feed on the ground. So I give them 50 pounds every other day or so and then they exclusively get food scraps i give all of our food scraps and veg from the garden to them and uh, they don't look like they're uh, they're hurting do they they have caught up and passed these pigs these pigs are about a year and a half old same with these ones they're a year and a half old these ones are like four months old so i don't think they're hurting off of food scraps Come out. You want some? No, you don't want any? He's like, no, give me the grain. I see the bucket. You got it? It's pretty big. Nobody wants kukuzis because they can smell the grain. Come on, sister. Can you take this inside? Can you take this new bucket inside? More biscuit.
So I am just getting these tomatoes trimmed up and put in the freezer. I'm collecting all my tomatoes as we get them, as they slowly come in. And I'm gonna get them put in the freezer to deal with later. Cause we don't really have enough for like a giant batch of spaghetti right now. And it's a lot easier to just freeze them and then pull them out so I can do them all in one shot. Good afternoon, beautiful people. I suppose here's as good a place as any to yeah. start the vlog. Uh, not a terrible amount of stuff going on today. As you saw in the beginning of this video, last night we were out just having garden time in the yeah. evening and there was so much to just grab and so much to do. It was like, why don't I just grab the camera just so we, we have it. So yeah, it, these are my favorite nights of summer is right when the sun goes down and it cools down and you have like about an hour and a half of daylight left. Yeah. And you can wander around and pick stuff and eat stuff out of the garden. I mean, it's just been, these are, these are the best summer nights. Yeah, they are. So we picked a whole bunch of tomatoes. Yeah, I mean, there's still a whole bunch a whole on the counter. Actually. Like, uh, I would like to point out these dark red ones are brandy wines. Mm -hmm. We've never grown the brandy wines before. They're kind of like a beef steak. Yeah. Real they, big they one. Get big, they get yeah. big, but they are absolutely beautiful. They the are. color. The flesh of them is beautiful. Yes. And then, you know, we've had some weird mutations. Yes. Um, some of these, I don't know what's going on there, but it's interesting looking. Yeah. I didn't know there was two of them that had noses. Yeah, there were, and then one had a tail. Yeah, one had a tail. It actually <laughs> looked like a, a pig's behind. It did. <laughs> so, so, yeah. These ones are destined for tomato pie soon. And I think what I'm gonna try this year is slicing these probably fairly thickly. Uh, peel them and slice them and dehydrate them and then ideally we would be able to rehydrate them a little bit and make tomato pie in the winter in the dead of winter yes uh, we'll see. We'll try. the idea I mean, of tomato the same, yeah the but. idea of tomato pie in the dead of winter because we actually talked about it over uh uh it was our christmas of eating yes the month of december where we made ourselves sick on eating all the foods that was one of the things that came up like everybody brought it up it's like oh can we have tomato pie there's no nope. tomatoes. Not with store-bought tomatoes that Absolutely. are from who knows where. Absolutely not. That'd be no. terrible. It would be disgusting. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try that this year. We'll see. Okay. I suppose I could just freeze them to like freeze slices, but yeah, you could. They might turn to mush though. Yeah. So I, that's why I want to try dehydrating. Okay. We'll try that. Okay. That sounds good. But these ones. These will be fresh for everybody. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. All right. Before lunchtime and before uh, it gets too much hotter. I am going to go out in the garden and harvest our walking onions. The time has come, it is finally here. All of our walking onions are, for the most part, completely done. I need to harvest them because I've noticed that some of them, as those tips fall down on the ground, have started to sprout. So, I've got a box for all my onions. I've got some nippers. Yep. I'm gonna go out. Are you gonna come help? Yeah, grab the door <laughs> for me, I got my hands full. All right, so these walking onions have done amazingly well. Um, I'll just do a quick rundown in case people didn't see our, our last video where we talked about them. So they grow like a normal onion. They get their, you know, onion stalk, various shoots, but instead of a flower head, they grow bulbs, just like that, okay? So that right there is the new onion. It's even got a little sprout. What happens is as they get big, they get heavy, like this one, or even better, like this one. This one already fell down, but it did another shoot, and that shoot also had onions on it. What happens is, yeah, here's one. This one made it all the way to the ground, and those, if it was in contact with the ground, if you look right there, you can see little roots starting to poke out. So all of these bulbs will root, and once they're rooted, you have an entirely new onion plant. Here's one that made it to the ground right here. Yep, it's already quite rooted. I don't want that rooting right there because we are going to move them elsewhere. But there you go. That's what they do. That was probably one of this one of these that's hanging right here. Made it to the ground and put out roots. Walking onions like this don't really produce uh, like a big bulb. Think green onion, like these. Like here's some, these are putting out 
new greens right here. Basically what we call these is perpetual green onions. Last year I filled this bed with, I think I only maybe had a dozen little bulbs like that. Uh, a friend of ours gave us our initial walking onions, pulled them up out of her garden, gave them to us, and then I didn't really do a good job taking care of them because I just didn't have the space. I didn't, I didn't have the brain power, honestly, just to plan it out. And so they kind of got kicked around from bed to bed to bed. And finally, just over here in that bed, I was getting that bed ready, tilling it up uh, to plant something else, and they were in there. I dug them up in a big chunk of dirt, set them up behind the bed, figured I would deal with them later, and I left them there for like four months. Well, those silly things, they didn't care. They grew in that chunk of dirt I left them in, produced onions just like this, and went to reproducing and spreading. Now, I will say, if you're an absentee gardener, maybe these aren't for you because they will escape. They, uh, they can be highly invasive. In fact, I think a couple states like Idaho, I think they're banned because they can be invasive. So, just something to think about. All right, I can already see there's a lot that have actually fallen down and made it to the ground. Here's a whole ton that I just saw. Look at these. These made it to the ground and they have all rooted. Look at that. Onions everywhere. So, I'm gonna dig up all these. They will be fine. Look at the roots on that one. These will be fine. We will pull them up and get them moved. I'm actually gonna stick some of these in the greenhouse. So we have green onions over the winter. Now I will say we did have green onions over the winter in here. They froze all the way back to the ground probably four times over the winter. As soon as it would warm back up, you'd see green onions poking up. We're just gonna go through and harvest all the little mini bulbs that are you know, up top. Some of them, what they'll do is they produce their main stock, they'll do these and then they make another stock and they do those. These will actually root and sprout too. These are the ones that'll get away from you right here. All right, enough talking. Let's pick. Can you want some nippers? I got a pocket knife. Okay. So I'm just gonna do this. Those are ready. Do that. Clean them up so we don't have tons and tons to clean up later. That one made it to the in the grass and had rooted. So that's what I mean, they can be invasive, they can escape. They just drop off their little uh, post they grow on and Save they're free. <laughs> so an example of also getting away before you're ready. Here's the tube coming off. It goes into the ground, and that's the bunch. The bunch has now righted itself and is producing more onions. I'm not real upset about that because we're gonna have green onions ready to go. Like, we can eat these now. Um, actually, this bunch right here were some, yeah, you can see, I just kind of pile them as I get them, and this is where I had piled some, and these ones are too big to dig up, so I'm just gonna leave them. I don't really have anything pressing for this bed, so it's all good. This is what we've got so far. That's a good amount for starting with just a dozen little bulbs. Okay, I gotta dig up all these. Make sure these aren't sprouting. Some people get mad at the word invasive. Like, oh, they're invasive? Yeah, no, I'm not planting them. And I'm like, I want food. Uh huh. If that's, your food stays, yeah. Where it is. Like it doesn't matter what you do, you're always gonna have food growing. That's what happens in a few weeks after they touch the ground. They just take off. We haven't tried eating the bulb portion. We just mainly use these for nice green onions. After planting these, we have had green onions on everything for about a year now, we have had green onions in the garden at all times, and it has been so nice. You want that fresh zing of a green onion? Just go out, pick you some green onions, and you're good to go. That's what we got. 
most of a box, varying sizes. Some are small, some are big, some are really, really small. I'll take these inside. We're gonna put some in the greenhouse. We're gonna let some just grow out here. They're pretty much gonna be permanent. Um, I'm gonna take some of these and plant them around trees in the orchard. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, but like I said, they can get away. So uh, we are eating them nonstop. And we know how to deal with stuff that likes to grow. All right, so let's see if we can actually like do this and talk about it without giggling, giggling the whole time. time. All right, so you wanna explain what exactly is going on? Okay, so long story short, we don't really eat out fast food anymore. We go to a sit down restaurant every now and then when like when family comes into town, but we just stopped eating fast food for various reasons, mostly because it makes us feel absolutely terrible. And once you learn what's in, you know, a lot of the food. things, yeah. Uh, you just like start getting it out of your right. out of your life. But you and I ate the heck out of some Taco Bell <laughs> when we were younger, and we actually really loved Taco Bell. Like tw twenty years ago, Taco Bell. Like back yes. when you could go spend like ten bucks and get enough food to last right. for two days. OG like, Taco Bell. Yeah. That was the that was the highlight of Taco Bell. So the other day, you were like. You know what we should try to do is remake like Taco Bell stuff at home. We already have remade so many of our favorite other things here at home. We should try making Taco Bell. And one of the items that came up was the crunch wrap. For anybody who's not familiar with Taco Bell cuisine, <laughs> it is a flour tortilla wrapped around a hard corn tortilla a tostada. with meat and cheese and beans and it's like tomato and flatten nuts. out a taco and then wrap it in a t flour tortilla yeah like, and and nacho cheese sauce and stuff like so horrible like no real food value but they are tasty and they are very tasty so that is the goal for tonight is to recreate a crunch wrap at home this is going to take a minute because there's pieces but the first thing i'm going to be doing is frying up our tostada parts all right so i got some lard in here i'm just gonna shallow fry these make giant yeah, and they won't be as big. And we got really big tortillas, so. That's all right, it's better to have a little bit extra tortilla. That's true. I'll probably do like eight or nine, so we have extra. I can eat at least two. I figured you could. I betcha if we were to eat Taco Bell now, it, there was something we ate that we hadn't eaten. It was like Chick-fil-A. Oh yeah. We hadn't eaten Chick-fil-A in years and we went and got it and it was like, this isn't as good as I remember. Yeah. Yeah. That's because we've been eating our own food for so long. Yeah. It's just something that happens. There's a lot of people we've talked to that have the same story. Once you've gotten away from commercial prepared food and you've been eating home cooked food and you go back, the commercial stuff just tastes different. It's not, good. It's, not like, it's not like you remember. I think this is setting a really high expectation of what I'm about to make you for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very nervous now. <laughs> These are gonna be really good. I really hope so. It's probably not gonna taste like a crunch wrap, no. but it's gonna be gourmet. It will. It'll be gourmet. Gourmet, <laughs> gourmet Taco Bell. <laughs> you making a cheese sauce? Mm -hmm. Hey, like, honestly, the best cheese sauce comes out of a can. I know. And it's mostly soy. And a whole bunch of other plastic things. Yeah, like straight up plastic. It's plastic. So I'm going to make, it's going to be like a bechamel with a cheese sauce, like you would put in mac and cheese or something. But I'm going to put some cheddar cheese and some nutritional yeast, a little bit of mustard powder, maybe some Worcestershire sauce to kind of like bring up that flavor. Uh, Worcester. Worcester, Worcester sauce. sauce. Worcester sauce. As our uh, UK viewers said. Yes, which I love that. That just tickled me. Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce. I missed that, I was talking. It's just flour. I like to catch the ingredients. I know. Because it's nice to watch it all go together. Because if you, you know, happen to want to, like, copy it. Yeah. Maybe you should stop talking. I can take a hand. Ooh, that's more brown than that. It's going to be a dark sauce. Oh, well. Whatever. <laughs> Don't you usually make your own chili uh, powder? No, I actually buy chili powder and then I'll make, I make our chili seasoning because it has other stuff in it. That's right. Chili powder. There's some mustard. Mm -hmm. There's some nutritional yeast. What is this, And Mama? some Worcester sauce. Worcester sauce. There's quite a cheese sauce you got there, lady. <laughs> Probably gonna thin that out a little bit. What kind of cheese is that? Cheddar. White cheddar? Mm-hmm. Ooh, that tastes good. That's not bad. 
I'm not mad at that. Okay, is that it? Lettuce, tomatoes, meat, cheese, sour cream's in there, crunchy stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Okay, I guess we can start assembling and I guess we gotta get the big thing out to fry. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Tilla. Okay. Sows. Sows first. That way we have a humongous mess. The uh, challenge will be making sure that there's not so much in it that we can't get it closed. <laughs> okay. And then... Uh, I'd put a little bit more cheese on that and okay. stick the lettuce and the tomatoes into it. Like, not a ton of cheese. But... Yeah. Ooh, run away. I want to pay more than I meant. Okay. And it's got to have just enough Ooh. crunch. Sour crunch cream, crunch some maters. Probably gonna be someone who once worked at Taco Bell watching us do that, and they're gonna be like, nope. "That's not how you nope. make it." Not, not it at all. See if you can fold it up nice and pretty. I think it had five sides. Uh, oh, does it need to be a specific number? Yeah. Hey, okay. that looks like a crunch wrap. Ooh, yeah, yeah that pan's, pan's ready. ready. Okay, here we go. Ready? All right, okay. now we just brown it and then it's ready. Oh, I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. Like, these... I mean, I know I have realistic expectations. It's not gonna taste just like Taco Bell, but. It's gonna be good. I'm pretty excited. That one's probably ready. Yep, it's ready. All right, there's one. All right. So that's yours, that's the last one. Mm -hmm. All right, let's eat. All right. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for staying. Hey. It's like a crunch wrap. It's very wrap. similar. Mm -hmm. It's like if you had a gourmet crunch wrap. Mm -hmm. Like the nacho sauce is all wrong. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. But this is not bad. Mm. Mm. Okay, I'm not bad. This is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scale of one to 10, one being didn't taste anything like it, 10 being exactly like it. How close was this to being Taco uh, Bell? I'd say about eight. I'd, I'd say like, as far as tasting like Taco Bell, real similar. Uh, wow. As far as like, good to eat, 11. Oh, that was great. That was so that was good. Very tasty. Wow. Taco Bell crunch. Nine? Nine? Okay. You wouldn't know, she has never eaten at a drive-thru. Nope. Never. Which is really weird, like it thinking, is, yeah. like, yeah. how have we, we, haven't, we, haven't, been, our life that much. we haven't been to a drive-thru in three years? Yeah, no, we haven't. I mean, we still get a hankering every now and then, yeah. but it's just weird to think. I mean, if you count the ice cream shop, sort Yes, of we, we do visit. A, it's a drive up. Ice yeah, cream we, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we have an ice cream shop that we visit. Yeah. All right, with all that said, that was a fun dinner to make. It was successful. That was, I feel accomplished. Yeah, like... <laughs> We don't usually like make copycat food yeah. like that. That was very That's unique. Good. Yeah. It was good. I wanna get down. Okay, just a minute. Okay. Since you wanna get down, what do we say? Hello. What? what? Cat. Cat? Cat? Okay. <laughs> Alright guys, we'll catch you guys on the next kitty one. Cat. Bye. Kitty cat. Kitty cat. You say bye? You say bye? Kitty cat. Okay.